All right, this is part one of a video on evaluating inverse trig functions. And before we dive into it, let's just remember what inverse functions are. Um, one of the main things you may remember is that when you find an inverse function, you switch x and y. So x is normally what you plug into an equation and y is what you get out. So when you're finding an inverse function, you're switching the input and the output. Now for trig functions, what we put in, our input, is usually an angle. And when we get out, our output is usually some kind of a number. It's a ratio that we got from doing um, opposite over hypotenuse for sine or something else. So what we get out is a ratio, um, some kind of number. So before we talk about the inverse trig functions, in function, in, uh, functions where we'll put in a number and get out an angle, <clears throat> let's think of what kind of outputs we've been getting from our inverse, from our uh, trig functions so far. So um, we did a lot of these in the last uh, math lab assignment that we did in class, but let's practice a little bit. If I were to say what's sine of 45 degrees, you would draw 45 degrees in standard position. 45 you know that you would draw straight from terminal from the terminal side of the angle down to the x-axis, and that would make a 45-45-90 right triangle. And of course, you've begun memorizing that when the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 1, each of the side lengths is root 2 over 2 for a 45-45-90. Which means this coordinate, x, y, would be root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2, and sine is the y value. Remember, when the hypotenuse is 1, when r is 1, sine is just y. And so sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, the y value here. That's my output. So that's one of the numbers that I can see as an output. In fact, cosine of 45 is also root 2 over 2, because we know when the hypotenuse is 1, cosine of an angle is just x. And so the x value of this angle is also root 2 over 2. That's the output for sine of 45 and cosine of 45. What's the output for tangent of 45 degrees? Well, tangent is y over x, root 2 over 2, over root 2 over 2. And so we get 1. So what kind of numbers do we see as our output for trig functions, at least for 45 degree angles? We see numbers like root 2 over 2 and 1. And actually, any um, angle around the circle that makes a 45 degree angle makes a 45 degree triangle. So 45 degrees makes a 45, 45, 90. So does 135 degrees. That makes a 45, 45, 90. So does 225. That makes a 45, 45, 90. So does 315. All of these triangles I've just drawn are 45, 45, 90 right triangles. And so all of them will have sine um, equaling root 2 over 2 and cosine equaling root 2 over 2. The only thing that will be different, different is plus or minus. So for example, if we do sine of 225 degrees, here, the coordinate is negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. So the y value is negative, and my answer is negative root 2 over 2. But I'm still seeing that number that I recognize, root 2 over 2. Okay, so what kind of numbers do I get as outputs for 30, 60, 90 right triangles? So let's ask ourselves, um, what is, say, sine of 30 degrees? Well, I'll draw 30 degrees in standard position. This makes a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. I get to choose whatever length I want for the hypotenuse, so I'll choose 1. That means the shorter side is 1 half and the longer side is root 3 over 2, which means this coordinate is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. I'm looking for sine of 30. Sine is the y value. So sine of 30 is 1 half. What's cosine of 30? 
cosine of 30 is the x value, so cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. And these are numbers that I'll recognize from all over the unit circle. Say I'm doing uh, 300 degrees. What is cosine of 300 degrees? Well, first let's draw 300 degrees in standard position. There it is. It's 30 degrees past 270, which makes this a 60 degree angle. And there I've got another 30, 60, 90 right triangle. I get to choose whatever length I want for the hypotenuse. The shorter side is 1 half. The longer side is root 3 over 2. And so the coordinate here is 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. Which means cosine is the x value. So when the hypotenuse is 1, cosine of the angle is just the x value. So cosine is 1 half. And out of curiosity, what's sine of 300 degrees? Sine is the y value, so negative root 3 over 2. So one thing I'm noticing is when I'm dealing with an angle that makes a 45-45-90 right triangle or a 30-60-90 right triangle, I get numbers like um, root 2 over 2, 1 half, and root 3 over 2, right? The only weirder numbers I can get are for tangent. Like for tangent of 45 degrees, I got 1. What's tangent of 300 degrees? Well, now I've got to do y over x. So negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half. That's negative root 3 over 2 times the reciprocal of 1 half. My 2's cancel and I get negative root 3. Cotangent, of course, would be the reciprocal of that. So cotangent of 300 degrees would be negative 1 over root 3, the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent's y over x, cotangent is x over y, it's reciprocal. And I would need to rationalize this. So cotangent of 300 degrees is root 3 over 3. So those are kind of weirder numbers. Let's list the numbers that we've seen so far. We've seen root 2 over 2, plus or minus, 1 half, plus or minus, root 3 over 2, plus or minus. For tangent, we've seen 1, root 3, root 3 over 3. These are the numbers that we're going to see when we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And you've already had a lot of practice finding these kinds of numbers. The important thing is to recognize these numbers because when we do inverse trig functions, which we're about to try, we're going to start seeing these numbers instead and have to figure out what angles they go with. So the input will be this number, this ratio, and the output that we'll need to come up with will be the angle measure. Okay, um, so let's give it a shot. Let's ask ourselves, um, before we even introduce the inverse trig function notation, let's just ask ourselves, sine of what angle equals root 2 over 2? Sine of what angle equals root 2 over 2? Now we saw earlier that sine of 45 degrees equals root 2 over 2. The question is, are there any other answers? Well, here's 45 degrees. Sine is the y value here, root 2 over 2. That means this value on the y-axis is root 2 over 2, doesn't it? Well, isn't there another angle that has that y value? Yeah, right here. This is another 45, 45, 90 right triangle, which means this angle in standard position is 45 degrees less than 180. Okay, this is 135 degrees. So it just turns out that I've got a couple answers for theta. Theta could be 45 degrees, because sine of theta, sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Theta could also be 135 degrees. You know what else theta could be? Theta could be 
negative 225. Negative 90, negative 180, negative 225 brings me to the same place, right? Or for that matter, it could be, um, let's see, 360 plus 45, which would be 405 degrees. How many different angles could I come up with that have a sign of root 2 over 2? Actually, there's an infinite number of them. So that's going to be maybe a little bit of a problem when we're trying to do our inverse trig functions. Let's introduce those now. Inverse sine is notated with this little negative 1, which we recognize from inverse, trig func from inverse functions before. We used to see it like this. And we remember that means the inverse of f of x. It doesn't mean the reciprocal. This doesn't mean the reciprocal either. This isn't 1 over sine, which would be cosecant. This is the inverse of sine. Inverse sine of what number, or inverse sine of some number, equals an angle. We just saw that inverse sine uh, of root 2 over 2 could be 45 degrees, or 135 degrees, or negative 225 degrees. It's basically like saying, this is the same, same thing written in a different notation, sine of what angle equals root 2 over 2, or a. The difference is that inverse sine has restrictions built in. I can only get angles out that are between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees. So which of the angles that we just saw, 45, 135, negative 225, 405, which one is between negative 90 and 90? Only one of them, only 45 degrees. Inverse cosine is written like this with a little negative one. And saying inverse cosine of a equals theta is the same as saying cosine of theta equals a. These are the same thing. The only thing is that a, that, ang uh, that ratio that we get out, has to be between 0 and 180. You know, I'm just noticing a mistake in my notes here. Theta is what's between negative 90 and 90 here, not A. This should be theta as well. The angle that can work has to be between, for cosine, 0 and 180. And we're going to do some examples, examples with these in a little bit, but it's important to have in our notes first. Okay, inverse tangent is written like this. Inverse tangent of a equals theta is the same thing as saying tangent of theta equals a. The only thing is that theta, those angles we get out, have to be between negative 90 and 90 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the next thing we're going to try is a lot of practice with inverse trig functions because this probably isn't making a lot of sense yet. But I want us to be referencing the, this as we try the next problems. So let's try evaluating this expression. Inverse sine of 1 half equals what? I want to know what this equals, right? Well, this is the same as writing sine of what angle equals 1 half. Sine of what angle is going to give me an output of 1 half? Sine of what uh, angle equals 1 half? Now is 1 half one of those numbers that comes up with 45, 45, 90 right triangles? No, for 45, 45, 90 right triangles I got numbers like root 2 over 2, or for tangent I got 1. But 1 half is the shorter side length of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And I remember that because I've been dealing with 30, 60, 90 right triangles for a while now. One half comes up in 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Now remember from our definition that the answers I can get out for inverse sine have to be between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees, which means I can only get out angles between negative 90 and positive 90. Do you remember all students take 
calculus. This says that all of the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, only cosine and its reciprocal are positive. Well, I want sine to give me a positive answer here. So which of the two quadrants am I, should I be in? The first quadrant. I know I need to draw 30, 60, 90 so that the y value, because sine goes with y, is 1 half. And what angle is this? That's a 30 degree angle. And if we're not sure, we can check. Is it true that sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half? Yeah, it is. Sine of 30 degrees does equal 1 half. We can check using the methods we used in the previous assignment. Let's try another one. Cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. So if I want to evaluate this expression, I need to remember that what I'm asking myself is cosine of what angle equals negative root 2 over 2? Now I remember from my definition of inverse cosine that I can only get angles out that are between 0 and 180. So only angles between 0 and 180. So I'll draw that. Because I'm dealing with inverse cosine, I've got to be in quadrant 1 or 2. Now, I know that whatever angle is my answer is going to give me a negative number for cosine. In the first quadrant, all the trig functions are positive. Can't be there. In the second quadrant, only sine and its reciprocal are positive, which would mean cosine would be negative. So that's the quadrant I'm looking for. I know my angle is going to be somewhere here. Now I've got to ask myself, what kind of special right triangle does root 2 over 2 come from? Does it come from a 30, 60, 90? No, it comes from a 45, 45, 90. So I draw my 45, 45, 90 right triangle. The hypotenuse is 1, which means each of the sides is root 2 over 2. Um, what angle is this? It's 45 degrees less than 180, so this is 135. which means inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2 is 135 degrees. What if I were asking for my answer in radians? How many radians is this? Well, this is 1 pi over 4. This is 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 4. Alternatively, you could multiply 135 by pi over 180 degrees to get 3 pi over 4. Okay, let's try another one. Inverse tangent of 1. I've got to remember, this is the same thing as saying tangent of what angle equals 1. And I consult my chart. Inverse tangent can only give me angles between negative 90 and 90 degrees, which means I must be somewhere in the fourth quadrant or the first quadrant. Here, all trig functions are positive. Students take calculus. Here, um, only cosine and uh, its reciprocal are positive, which would mean tangent is negative. I don't want tangent to be negative. <coughs> Excuse me. Which means I must be somewhere in the first quadrant. What kind of triangle gives me a tangent value of 1? Let's see, tangent is y over x, which would mean sine, which is y, and cosine, which is x, would need to have the same value. What kind of triangle has an x value and a y value that are the same length? A 45, 45, 90 right triangle. This is 45 degrees. If I want, I can list the point here. It's root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Tangent is y over x, which would give me 1. So it looks like 45 degrees is it. Let's try a couple more. Let's find inverse tangent of negative root 3. 
Okay, this can be pretty tricky. I've got to think to myself, well, first of all, let's figure out which quadrant we should be in. So tangent is limited to, as we saw in the last problem, quadrant four and quadrant one. And here I'm hoping to get a negative answer for tangent. So that means I've got to be in quadrant one, because in or quadrant four, because in quadrant one, all of the trig functions are positive. So I'm somewhere in the fourth quadrant. Now I've got to ask myself, should I be drawing a 45-45 90 right triangle? Or should I be drawing a 30-60 90 right triangle? Which kind of right triangle do I get out answers that look like um, uh, root 3, um, negative root 3? Do you remember where we saw answers like that? When we did earlier the example of 300 degrees, we had a 30-60 90 right triangle, didn't we? and tangent was negative root 3, and cotangent was root 3 over 3, which means this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now sometimes it's not clear, should I draw this 30, 60, 90 right triangle? This is where this is 30 degrees. Or should I draw this one, where this is 60 degrees? It's not entirely clear which one is going to give me tangent value of negative root 3. If you're not sure, you can try both. Let's try this triangle first. This side length is 1 half. This one's root 3 over 2, which means this point is root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Tangent is y over x. So if this is my angle, tangent of this angle would be y over x. It's negative 1 half times 2 over root 3. My 2's cancel, negative 1 over root 3, which when I rationalize is going to be root 3 over 3. That's not what I'm going for. So let's try this angle now, this triangle. This is a 60 degree angle right here. So the shorter side of this triangle will be 1 half. The longer side will be root 3 over 2, which means the coordinate here is 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. Let's see, tangent of this angle would be y over x. What would that give me? y over x. So that's negative root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. Whoops. Negative root 3. Hey, that's what I'm going for. I want it to be this triangle because that gives me a tangent value of negative root 3. Now we did this problem earlier. We found out earlier that tangent of 300 degrees was negative root 3. So let me ask you this. Is inverse tangent of negative root 3 equal to 300 degrees? Think to yourself, yes or no. Well, remember that inverse tangent has to be an angle between negative 90 and 90. Wouldn't 300 degrees be way bigger than 90? So it's definitely not, whoops, it's definitely not 300 degrees. Instead, what angle is between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees here? This is negative 60 degrees. Negative 60 degrees would be right here in standard position, would make this 30, 60, 90 right triangle, with this for x and y, and tangent of this would equal negative root 3, so this fits the bill. Negative 60 degrees. Now, I would say this is probably an example of one of the most difficult ones you can see. Let's try one that's maybe a little bit easier. Let's try, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what are we on, A, B, C, D, E, there you go. Inverse sine of 1. Now this is a little different, because for sine values, I've only been seeing things like root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1 half. What kind of angles give me a sine value of 1? Well, first of all, I'll remember that 
<coughs> for inverse sine, I can only pick angles between negative uh, 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Sine is the y value, isn't it? Sine is the y value. Remember, sine of theta equals y. So where on this circle that I've drawn is y equal to 1? Down here it's equal to negative 1, isn't it? So not there. Here, y is equal to 0. So not here. Where is sine, where is y equal to 1? Up here. This is the point 0 comma 1. y is equal to 1. And so this is the angle where inverse of, uh, where sine of that angle would equal 1. What angle is this? This is 90 degrees, aka pi over 2 radians. Why don't you try this one on your own? So pause the video and give it a shot. Inverse cosine of 1. We're asking ourselves, cosine of what angle equals 1? All right, so um, cosine of what angle equals 1? Remember, for cosine, I'm limited to 0 to 180. Cosine is the x value. Cosine of theta equals x, doesn't it? So where on this semicircle is there an x value of 1? Right here. This is the point 1 comma 0. Any other point I draw on this circle does not have an x value of 1. What angle is this? This is... 0 degrees, a.k.a. 0 radians. 